going on YouTube? It's your boy Herco8 here. And picture this, you just got a brand new CPU with a brand new graphics card, but you got one question. Is it going to bottleneck? Hmm. Now turn up. It's not uncommon that many people ask this question. And I've seen it everywhere. Forums, YouTube comments, even in person, they all ask me, is my GPU gonna be bottlenecked by my CPU? And it's always the same answer. It depends. What is your GPU and CPU temps? What is your CPU and GPU usage? What games are you playing? What settings are you playing them at? These type of questions need to be answered to determine if your GPU is gonna be bottlenecked or not. Now, I had one guy ask me, seriously, nope, I can't make this up. One guy asked me, hey, I got an i7 6800K and a T GTS 1080 Ti. Is it going to bottleneck? Really? You Are you asking that question? You spent $400 on a CPU, two to $300 for the motherboard, and then $700 for the GPU. Now you tell me, is it going to bottleneck? So let's get into what bottlenecking really is. Your CPU is trying to gather up as much information as possible about, about a game or application or whatever. And it's trying to send that data to the GPU so the GPU can draw the graphics or whatever on your screen. However, when you bottleneck, your CPU isn't fast enough to keep up and your GPU is just sitting there waiting, being underutilized. This is very common in lower tier CPUs such as the i3s and your Pentiums. However, with the newer moderation like the i3-7100 or even the 6300 and the G4560, uh, they greatly improve. However, they're not made for high-end gaming or uh, high-end GPUs. Also, I want to note that FX series from AMD, so your FX 4300, 6300, 8300, 8350, what have you, uh, can also cause a bottleneck as well. And please, I want to say that a APU, Accelerated Processing Unit, is not meant for gaming. The whole point of an APU is to have a graphics or a graphics chip and a CPU all into one die. However, once you take away that graphics capability, it becomes a weak CPU and it's not meant for gaming whatsoever. But that's for another video. Here's a scenario for you. Let's say you're in a diner. Your mouth is the GPU, your waiter is the CPU, and the food will represent the bits of information to be sent. So if your waiter is able to deliver you food in a timely manner and you're able to eat that food in a timely manner, then everything is going good and this is what's supposed to happen. If your waiter is struggling to get you that food to your plate so your mouth can eat, then you're sitting there waiting for the food and you're being underutilized. Thus, the waiter is bottlenecking your food. I know it sounds weird, but you get the idea. A simple way to test if your CPU is in fact bottlenecking is using simple monitoring programs such as NZST Cam or MSI Afterburner or even EVGA Precision. Now, they offer a lot of tools, don't get me wrong. However, the main two units you wanna look at is CPU usage and GPU usage. Because if your CPU usage is high and your GPU usage is low, then you're bottlenecked because your CPU is struggling trying to get that information to your GPU, but it's not doing it fast enough. Now when your GPU is high and your CPU is low, then this is what's supposed to happen because your GPU is being utilized as much as it can to draw all that information on the screen and your CPU is just giving that information away. Now another factor you wanna determine is the speed of your CPU. I've seen some cases where a bottleneck is not caused by the usage, but it's caused by the speed of the CPU. Most CPUs are around three gigahertz these days. However, if you notice that your CPU is at one gigahertz, especially 800 megahertz, then you may wanna go into the BIOS and reset the settings. Usually, this will fix the issue and you're able to enjoy your games as you should. I also wanna point out that another factor in bottlenecking is the type of games you're playing. For example, GTA, this is a very CPU intensive game. 
If your CPU isn't up to par for handling a game like GTA, then you may run into a bottleneck. Another popular game is Battlefield 1. Everyone loves to play Battlefield 1. This game is very utilized for higher core counts and clock speeds. So trying to play on ultra settings can cause a bottleneck. Now, there is something known as a GPU bottleneck where your CPU is fine, but your GPU is causing the issue. This is a lot more simple and really doesn't take a lot of figuring out. Let's say that you are trying to play Battlefield 1. You try and play it on 4K on ultra settings. However, you only have a GTX 1050, two gigabytes. Now, uh, if you're uh, not new to tech, you know this is not possible. However, if you are new, then I'm gonna tell you, it's not possible. Because your GPU is weak. Now, there's a lot of factors that plays into this. Core count, uh, temperature, uh, CUDA cores, a lot of stuff. Uh, transistors a lot of stuff that goes into it I'm not gonna get into all of the details about it just know that if your GPU isn't up to par to play a particular game at a particular setting you may want to look into that if you lower your settings and you're able to get higher FPS this means that your GPU was just not capable of be playing at higher settings which was causing the bottleneck also, you could try to lower the resolution as well. Just know that your CPU will have to do more work now. I hope this straightened out this bottleneck and craze uh, because again, I see a lot of people asking the question, hey, what is bottleneck? If you like this video, give me some thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me some thumbs down. As always, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on what tips you can offer about bottlenecking. It's your boy, Herkowait. That's all I got. I'm out of here. Peace. Don't touch mine.